I notice that some of you are reluctant to sit down. Perhaps you'd like to stand for the entire length of the sermon. That would be quite interesting. But of course that would make sure that uh, nobody falls asleep because we'll all be standing. So I do want to welcome all of you to our service today. And uh, for those of you who are watching us online, a very special word of greeting and welcome. It is good to see all of you in the house of the Lord. Now, as you know, we continue with our series on the questions that God asks his people. And some of you may be wondering, when is this series going to end? So I have, <laughs> I have good news for you, and that is that uh, today is the last of the questions from the Old Testament. So we are looking at the book of Haggai. And uh, from uh, next week or the week after, we'll start looking at a few of the questions that our Lord Jesus Christ asked. And we'll continue uh, questions that God asked and then we will end it. So the good news is that uh, the end is in sight and uh, we are ending uh, the questions from the Old Testament. Of course, uh, obviously we haven't dealt with all the questions that God has asked his people in the Old Testament, but we have selected some of the key some of the important, some of the defining questions that we find in the Old Testament. And I do want to thank uh, the worship team for leading us in worship today. So uh, our passage for today, if uh, Andrew, we are ready to bring it up, if we are, this is Haggai chapter 1 and uh, verses 2, 3, 4 and 5. So let me read this for you and then I will uh, give you a little background, a little backstory, a little context if you please. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say the time has not come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? And verse 5, now this is what the Lord Almighty says, give careful thought to your ways. And uh, the question that we are dealing with today is found in verse 4. So Andrew, if we can bring up verse 4 again, please, just for emphasis. Where our Lord God, where the Lord God asks through Haggai, is it time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? In other words, the question is, you people are busy building your houses and paneled houses at that while the house of the Lord lies in ruins. As I begin, I want to make a disclaimer, and that is that God is not against building houses. If you have nice, beautiful houses, praise the Lord for that. You want to invest in two or three more houses as the Lord loves you, praise the Lord for that. Pastor Roger and I will be happy to come and bless those houses. So important disclaimer, God is not against us having homes and beautiful homes. But as we study the context, we realize there is a reason for the Lord to ask this question through his servant, the prophet Haggai. Now, the backstory to this is that Haggai is one of the three what we call post-exilic prophets, which means that he ministered once the people of Israel or the Jewish people returned to the land of Judea. And uh, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, they ministered to these people after they came back. And uh, they are back in the land, and they started off well. So the background to this whole question is that they started off well. They started rebuilding, they got excited, they got involved. But slowly, things got a little complicated, and they slowed down. And they became somewhat disinterested in the things of God. And that's what we want to unpack in detail. But I want to begin with a story about a lady. And this didn't happen in Canada. This happened in some Asian country. As you will guess uh, from the details of the story, it's about the tuk-tuk. Have you heard of the tuk-tuk? 
Yes, some of us call it the tuk-tuk, some of us call it the auto, some of us call it the three-wheeler. And if you know anything about the tuk-tuks and the drivers, uh, they are a law unto themselves. You, you smile because you understand. And uh, so there was this lady who was trying to cross the road and she was knocked down by a speeding tuk-tuk. And then she fell to the ground, but uh, providentially she just had a few bruises and there was no serious injury. And uh, she was up on her feet, but uh, the tuk-tuk drivers, uh, the driver in true tuk-tuk driver fashion took off. They couldn't find him. Uh, but there was a gentleman who was watching this and he walked across to the lady and he said I saw what happened and uh, professionally I am a lawyer and I know that what he did to you was not right and so I would be very happy to follow through this press charges and make sure that you get a decent compensation for any, uh, for any injuries you may have suffered and so he took her to the hospital they dressed up her wounds and she was back at home and true to his word this gentleman appeared on her behalf free of charge and uh, when the matter was closed this lady received a healthy compensation and uh, so the lawyer summoned her to uh, his office and then she got the check and she was so moved she was so grateful she thanked him profusely and she said, Sir, thank you so much for what you've done. And she came home and she thought to herself and said, You know what? This gentleman really went out of his way to help me. I didn't ask him. He was so kind. He was so generous. And look what he has done for me. There is something that I ought to do to repay his kindness. Some little token. And she started to think to herself and say, you know what, what am I going to do with all this money? For all his hard work and all the effort he put and for the fact that he did not charge me anything, I am going to give him half the money that I received in terms of compensation. A very noble thought. But the night she thought about it, she thought about it more and the next morning she began to think about the fact that she was parting with half the compensation she had received. And she said, you know what, this gentleman is a very rich lawyer and why would I give him more money and make him even richer? You know what I'm going to do, instead of giving him half the money that I receive, I will prepare for him a nice tasty meal. I'll prepare a few dishes, put them together, take it to him and say, Sir, this is in appreciation for all that you have done for me. And so the next morning she started working through the recipes and the menu and all of that. And she even started toying with the idea of going to the store, uh, the grocery store, the mall and picking up all that she wanted to. And as she was working through this idea, she began to think, why would I want to put all this effort and give this man this whole meal and I might be actually contributing to his cholesterol problems and his health problems. So you know what, on second thoughts, I better not be doing this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change my mind and I'm going to make him a bowl of good healthy soup. And so she settled on this, she started working through the list and the details of all that she needed. And uh, she got herself ready to make the soup. And the next day she started to make the soup because she wanted to express appreciation to this very kind gentleman. So she started to make the soup and uh, it was good. She tasted one spoon and it was good. She tasted the second spoonful and it was delicious. And before she knew what was happening, she was down to half a bowl of soup. And the lady panicked. And she's like, I made this for the man. I made this for this kind gentleman who was helpful to me. And finally, I just have half a bowl of soap.
And then she did something that none of you ladies would do, but this is just a lady in this particular story, so don't take it personally. She took some hot water and she poured it into the bowl. She stirred it up. She covered with cling wrap and foil or whatever the case may be, took it to the gentleman and said, Sir, here is a little token of appreciation for all that you did for me. Now, it's a funny story. But if you follow the trend, you will see that the gentleman, the lawyer, he never asked for anything in return. But the lady started with great, uh, great value. She started at a very high place. She wanted to give half the money. And then it came down to a meal. And finally, if you think about it, all that this man got was a bowl of watered down soup. Now, if you think about it, if you've got the gist of that story, you understand the message for today. Because in the book of Haggai, in chapter 1, verses 3, 4, 5, when the Lord asks this question through Haggai, it is not about houses. It is not that the Lord is against his people living in good houses. It is about the fact that they started well, like the lady in the story. But because of several other concerns they had because of the busyness of life, they slowed down in their commitment and their interest and they moved away from what they were doing. So here, here are the details of the story. The people returned to the land from Babylon. They have been exiles for quite some time. They come back to the land and they start well. The temple is in ruins and uh, lots of other parts of the city, they're all in ruins and they start rebuilding the temple. They get the altar going, they restore the foundations, they do all of this within the first two years after their return. And then there is a genuine excuse, a genuine problem that they face, not an excuse, but a genuine problem that they face, where the Samaritans start showing opposition, genuine opposition to their work. And because of that, they slow down and then they stop. The altar is done, the foundation has been restored partly, and then because of opposition, they stop. And then the opposition eases up a little bit, but now the people have gotten so used to not worshipping in the temple, not going to the temple, not being involved in the temple, that they continued as usual. And in the meanwhile, they are now focusing on cultivating their land, farming their lands, building their homes, uh, doing all kinds of things and rebuilding their families, rebuilding their lives in the land. And they have slowly forgotten the focus that they needed to have on building the house of the Lord. And that is why God sends Haggai and asks them a question. Is it time for you to live in your paneled houses while my house lies in ruins? If you go to the verse before, you will see the people's excuse was, it is not time for us, this is not the time for us to work on the house of God. They probably were saying we need more time. We need to focus on other things. The time will come for us to get back and concentrate on building God's house. But now, no, this is not the time. We are busy with our own affairs. We are busy in building our own homes. We are cultivating lands, farms. The time will come when we will give ourselves to rebuilding God's house, but not now. And so God uses the same logic. You say this is not the time, but how come it's the time for you to rebuild your houses and build your paneled homes? And that is really the background to this story. But the story ends well. It's not a story that ends in defeat. It's not a story that ends without hope. It's not a story that's hopeless. Because after 16 years of neglect, after 16 years of doing nothing to rebuild the house of God, after 16 years of not being interested in the things of God, busying themselves about all that they had to do, the people return. 
under the leadership of Haggai and Zechariah and they complete building the house of the Lord. So the story ends well. But the point we want to make is that it is possible that because of various situations in life that we start well, but then slowly we could, we could become indifferent to the things of God. Some of us have heard of Eli Wiesel, and Eli Wiesel was a Holocaust survivor, and uh, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. He's written many books, including uh, the famous book called Night. Some of us may have read it. But Eli Wiesel said, the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is indifference. And so if we can go back to the story in the book of Haggai and the question that God asks his people through the prophet. You are saying this is not the time for God's work. This is not the time to engage in the affairs of God. But how come it is time for you to be busy about your own affairs? It is possible that the people became indifferent to the things of God. They didn't hate God of course. And it could be that even in our lives, because of all that has happened over the last two or three years, we've not been meeting in person, we've just gotten back to meeting in person, our lives have changed because of the pandemic. It could be that we've gotten busy with our lives in a different way. It could be that we may have become a little indifferent to the things of God. But like in the story here, it ends well. We praise God that we are coming back to in-person services. We praise God that babies are being born, people are getting married, and things are beginning to move in the right direction. So the question I ask is, what does it mean for us as a group of believers? What does it mean for us as people of Church of God, Fairview Church of God? It means something very simple and very important. As we look to the future, God is saying this is now time to come together and move forward. And I invite you, Pastor Roger and I talked about this, I invite you as we get back more and more into in-person services, as we get back more into starting our regular in-person meetings, uh, you saw the announcement, you saw the notice, uh, next Sunday after the service we are planning to get our young adults together. As we initiate many of these uh, ministries, we invite you to be a part of this journey forward. That even as Haggai and Zechariah rallied the people together and they came together after 16 years of neglect and they completed the work of God, we invite you to come together and move forward with us. And I want to share with you a very specific slide. Pastor Roger and I talked about the five purposes. Do you remember the five purposes? Some of you do, some of you are looking away from me. You know, when I ask a hard question and you don't know the answer, you know what happens? You look away from me and you're appreciating the stained glasses behind. And so then I know I need to uh, rework the question. So Pastor Roger has very kindly placed these uh, five questions for us on a slide. And so these are the five purposes. And I invite you as the Fairview Church of God family to make sure that you are in one of these five worship uh, purpose groups. It might be in worship. It might be in discipleship and training. So for example, if it's worship, it means planning for, particip for participants in the service. Did I get it right here? Okay. Planning for participants in the services and outreach to the community. Discipleship and training, developing our personal faith through studies and retreats. So we have the Bible studies that go on. And I know we've had retreats in the past. We're talking about getting those retreats going again. Fellowship, planning social events to create community, planning for refreshments. I know there used to be a time when we had refreshments on a regular basis. Getting back to those kinds of things. Ministry. Finding ways to serve persons in our community, families in need, a food drive, serving in a food bank, gift bags, uh, so on and so forth. Evangelism and missions. 
helping our community become aware of the church cornrows promoting missions missionaries talking of cornrows i want to thank uh, uh, Juliana and the team for organizing that and Pastor Roger and I were discussing that we were able to make quite a number of connections and some old and some new from the community it was a very meaningful and fruitful event so from these five purpose groups you might recognize that you have giftings you have certain strengths where you might want to contribute and be a part of one of these five purpose groups we also have the tech team and we already have some very fine people supporting us with great commitment that might be your strength you might want to be a part of the tech team or you might want to be a part of the young adults ministry or join and help the children's ministry so it's the five purpose group it's a tech team or it's the young adults ministry or the children's ministry in any one of these where the lord leads the lord has gifted each one of us where you're comfortable where your strengths are join and be a part of one of these groups and like the people of the old testament like they rallied together and completed the work that god had entrusted to them may we as we come out of this difficult season as we enter into a new season as a church may we come together use our gifts for the glory of god and build the ministry that god has entrusted to us may god bless the reflection of